identify threats to stability. That's what I've been doing for many years at NYU and in my consulting work. And if you reflect on the last 10 years, we've actually seen that major trends have been building. We're, we've seen a challenge to the status quo in four key areas, and tech has actually made each of these areas worse. Number one, geopolitically, we know that this is no longer a US-led world order in the way that it was previously. And uh, uh, the reality is this started long before President Trump took office and became a nationalist. Uh, we also know that politically, uh, there is a challenge to both dictatorship and democracy. It's not just about the Arab Spring countries, there's been a challenge to the political status quo by citizens armed with tech uh, for the last couple of years. Uh, think of the austerity protest in Europe, the, pro uh, the backlash in Venezuela, the anti-corruption movements led by tech-armed citizens in South Korea, in uh, Brazil, there's definitely a shift happening. And again, it's been worsened by tech. Thirdly, we all know that globalization has its problems, uh, but now there's a possible challenger with economic nationalism and populism. Throw in the tech factor, the looming cloud of automation unemployment, which I would argue most governments are not prepared for. Uh, that is a major concern. And lastly, I would argue that we are faced, and this is probably the biggest risk that most governments and perhaps the UN uh, are not on top of, which is that we are faced with a global identity crisis. This is not a post-Cold War era where the international community is promoting democracy and human rights. What are our world uh, global values as we see the narrative of extremists and xenophobes is, is increasing and they are leveraging social media in, in obvious ways. And we've seen it recently uh, with Sri Lanka and New Zealand. Uh, so we should be concerned about this sensitive global turning point that's been made worse by tech.